I used to think cults were fun. You get to hang out in the desert with your friends, do some mescaline, and hallucinate a religion into existence. Our cult was my life. My buddy Oren and I started it out of a decommissioned school bus we bought off a guy on Craigslist. The bus is rusted out and half of the windows are broken. We smeared the name The Beast on the side in blood red paint. We had 17 members, all of them burnt out junkie losers just like Oren and I, who cruised the beast around the desert looking for portals to the other realm. The other realm was Oren's idea. It was kind of like the last circle of hell from Dante's Inferno, a giant tornado of naked, writhing bodies eternally slamming into each other. Our version was supposed to be fun, though. One day, we found a portal. It didn't look like much at first. There was nothing there except an old, sun-bleached cow skull. But Orin said it was the place, so we pulled the bus over and disembarked. We got out the ceremonial peace pipe made from a hollowed-out hip bone of an animal carcass and loaded up the peyote. Orin and I began to smoke while the followers built a bonfire. The sky faded into a glowing orange as the sun set over the glistening desert sands. By the time it had sunk into purple twilight, the fire was a roaring 20-foot inferno, writhing into the sky like a great orange serpent. The pipe was passed around, and time slowed to a crawl. Shadows danced in the warm firelight that bathed the skull of a cow. And then, the demon emerged. It appeared at first as a tongue of blue-gray smoke, slithering from the left eye of the skull and twisting its way up into the sky. It began to curl, swirling itself into a whirlpool that slowly took on edges to form the head of a great wolf with shimmering fur of silver thread and teeth that gleamed like ivory daggers. I am the Great Wolf Spirit, it announced. Its voice was sonorous and deep, like the tolling of a bell. I looked around for the other cult members, but I realized that it was only me and the Great Wolf Spirit alone, drifting on a milky sea of stars. I wished to speak, but words would not come. The Great Wolf Spirit is the spirit of the Predator, said the wolf. It is the spirit of the Beast. It is the enforcer of the natural order, wherein the strong prey on the weak. Your friend has sought me out, thinking to find paradise. But there is no paradise. The strong shall always eat the weak. Now open your mind and become the wolf. He opened his mouth and howled, a chilling sound that gripped my bones and shook them, and the stars exploded into silver fireworks, and I fell forever into oblivion. When I awoke, I was naked and the fire had long since burned to ash, which the winds had scattered, leaving only a faint black spot in the dirt. I must have been out for days, maybe weeks, and unease crept in as I realized that I was alone. Oren was gone, and the rest of the cult too. The beast was nowhere to be seen. I didn't know why the others had abandoned me, nor how I had survived in the desert while wandering through the drug-induced psychotic haze that exists beyond the grasp of memory. The only half-formed plan that my muddied mind could seize was to get to higher ground, so that I might be able to find my bearings. I sighted a canyon in my distance, and over the next two hours, I made the grueling hike. My feet were bloody when I reached the top, but... My heart was light with joy, because on the distant horizon, I saw salvation. The beast. It was mid-afternoon when I came upon it. I sprinted to the bus with rising spirits, ready to see my friends. 
They were there all right. The insides of the beast were painted with their viscera. The world tilted and spun, and I had to grip a seat to stay upright. I felt my guts heave in protest, and then the torrent of hot vomit exploded from my throat. I stared at it in horror as I realized how I had not starved to death. On top of the pile of blood-red vomit was a partially digested human toe.